Does the McGirt decision in Oklahoma apply to misdemeanors? I'm Tulsa Attorney James Worth, and we're talking about the implications of the United States Supreme Court of McGirt that uh, ruled that the Muscogee Creek Nation was never disestablished. Um, as we know, that uh, precedent is going beyond the Muscogee Creek Nation. Um, it's likely going to the five civilized tribes, and it's likely to go tr uh, to tribes beyond that as well. But does it only apply like it did in McGirt? to the uh, Major Crimes Act, or does it also apply to misdemeanors? Well, the general consensus is the state lacks authority to charge Indians with crimes in Indian country, regardless of whether it is a felony or a misdemeanor or a major crime or not a major crime. Um, however, there is some debate on that. We see some prosecutors at least trying to fight it on that issue. Many misdemeanors are being dismissed. Um, so the general consensus, like I said, is that the state does lack authority. Uh, but the, the argument goes a little bit like this. As far as the Major Crimes Act, it's real specific. And it uses the language, the jurisdiction is exclusive jurisdiction to the United States under the Major Crime Act. So that's only for a handful of very serious crimes, you know, rape, murder, those sorts of things. So for other crimes, those fall within the General Crimes Act, which also provides for federal jurisdiction, but it doesn't use the same language. It doesn't have that word exclusive in it. So some people are arguing that it does not take jurisdiction away from the state. It simply gives it to the feds, but doesn't take it away from the state. So they have like concurrent jurisdiction there where either one could prosecute. Um, however, that's not the prevailing view at this time, but these things are being litigated. However, I did find one case, one case where the judge ruled that, um, that McGirt does not apply because it's a misdemeanor. And that's out of uh, McIntosh County, and it's actually case CM 2020-175, if you want to follow what's happening in that case. Um, it's a state V, um, um, and it's B-O-G-U-M-I-L-L. -L. Not sure on the exact pronunciation on that. I don't want to botch it. Uh, but in that case, a McGirt motion was filed alleging the state lacked jurisdiction to prosecute. It's a possession of meth case, which interestingly is a misdemeanor under federal law, but uh, under the Muscogee Creek Nation, where this could be prosecuted if it were dismissed there, or even if the tribe just wanted to prosecute it, even if it wasn't dismissed. In the uh, tribal code, it's actually a felony. So it's interesting they want it dismissed as a misdemeanor, where it could be prosecuted by the tribe as a felony. But anyway, they file that motion. And rather than having a long-winded um, order that explains all the reasoning, which we've seen in a lot of these cases, we have you know 20-page orders or 15-page orders from the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals or from trial judges, rather than the detail that gives the exact reasoning with quotes to authority, all we have is a simple denial that says it's not a major crime. So it appears the judge denied the McGirt because in it, it did find that the defendant is an Indian. It did find that the crime occurred in Indian country, but it denied it with just the note, not a major crime. Uh, so that case is still pending and going forward. Um, once uh, that goes further and there's um, some sort of resolution, the defendant could appeal that to a higher court uh, to get a different ruling. Uh, but we are watching that case because of that issue. And um, if you are, have similar circumstances, have questions about how this may apply to you or not apply to you, or, um, you're going to want to talk to an attorney about your specifics. For that, if you want to talk to me or somebody at my office, you can go to makelaweasy.com.